they made a mistake. But whether or not Bud Light can really recover from this mistake remains to be seen. I realize that the CEO of the company feels frustrated, is angry, fired basically. I mean, they said put on leave those two employees that were responsible for the marketing there. But, you know, ultimately it's going to come back to him and whether it's fair or not, I mean, he calls it misinformation. I think misinformation is just one more sort of smack in the face to all those Bud Light drinkers, right? Because, or, or Anheuser-Busch in general, this is a big company with a whole lot of beers, just like Molson Coors is. I mean, I, I said the other day, the interesting thing about Molson Coors was that it offered that trade for a lot of people that didn't want to drink Bud Light. They then had the Molson Coors alternative. Well, now a lot of you now don't have that one anymore. Again, I'm just checking the stock right now to see if it's recovered at all. No, it's still down about six tenths of a percent. So this is a stock that had fared quite well over the course of the last month, really quite well. And now, you know, is is seeing a little bit of a hiccup and whether or not this lasts, we'll see. Again, I don't think the commercial is going to quite ignite the fury that the other one did, but it's still indicative of where these companies are actually at. And the reason they're at where they are is because of environmental social governance. And I could talk about this all day because I actually think it's a huge mistake that we're not actually putting first and foremost the market itself. Instead, we're getting distracted by thinking about all these other things that don't really have anything to do with a company doing well. In fact, it's a very socialist style system, or worse than that, really totalitarian, if you would. In fact, Larry Fink was on Bloomberg several years ago talking about how, oh, you know, it's okay because investors actually, they like the totalitarian kind of, you know, top-down rule-oriented system. It's actually good for markets. No, it's not good for markets. The reason we are who we are, the reason the United States of America enjoys a higher standard of living, the reason why we have the world's largest economy in the world is because of capitalism. So if you destroy capitalism in an effort to be more equitable and in an effort to be more fair and in an effort to basically check all the boxes that BlackRock wants you to check, then what are you really going to be left with? Because if we are not, I got news for you guys, if we are not the hegemonic power of the world, who will be? China? You okay with that? I'm not. It's certainly not going to be Europe. Who else wants that gig? It would be China. It would be Russia, but they don't have the strength economically in order to, to do that or to support that. But if we're not careful... If we're like, yeah, we don't care about making money. We just want to make sure that we're representative of anyone and everything. Then our priorities are not properly aligned for success. Really? I mean, go around the world. Look at it. Every single time they've tried this socialist, which turns inevitably into a kind of communist system, it fails. It fails because they forget that we're all just human. And so maybe the pretty girls in the bikinis sell the beer. Maybe people don't want Dylan Mulvaney effectively shoved down their throat and they don't want to be told, you are not the kind of people that we want drinking our beer because this is really the one. I mean, this is, this is, this is weird. It's weird. It's like they just don't care about things that, that they ought to care about anymore. And I think that uh, as a result, we really risk much larger problems.